Last week I gave somebody a golf lesson here in the coaching room and we made some incredible gains off the tee, 60 yards, and in this video I'm going to show you how we did it. Now one of the best things about this session is the changes were actually really quite simple. There was nothing particularly complicated going on, but I don't think we'd have achieved what we did if the session hadn't been two hours. You see, I only teach for two hours. I'm a great believer in having somebody with me for that period of time, and it certainly made a big difference in this session. I just generally don't believe that we'd have got there in half an hour or an hour. Now, although those swing changes were really quite simple for the client, the session wasn't necessarily that easy for me. I've got to formulate a plan to make sure that we can actually make changes that are actually going to make a difference to the ball flight, as opposed to being kind up in making the swing look pretty. I'm not particularly interested in that. I want the ball flight to change. I want people to hit the ball straight or I want to hit the ball further. So let's take a look at the data in the launch monitor software so I can show you how the club delivery changed and how that then changed the ball performance. And then towards the end of the video, I'll show you the swing concepts that created this change in club delivery. So first of all, let's look at a typical shot that my lesson was hitting when they first walked into the coaching room. And of course, this is with driver. This is a top down view. And here in the orange, we've got the club path. And in the yellow, we've got the club face angle. Now you can see there's a bit of a discrepancy between those two angles and this will cause the ball to tilt on a spin axis. And that spin axis was 20.5 degrees to the right. So this golf ball clearly had some fade spin. You could say that it was maybe a slice. We've got spin of 4,311 RPM. So the spin was really quite high. And when we take a look at this angle here, it becomes obvious why. Attack angle, one degree up. So that's absolutely fine, but we had a dynamic loft of 27 degrees. So that dynamic loft for a 10 and a half degree driver was really quite high. That's gonna add spin, it's gonna add launch, it's gonna decrease the amount of compression. The efficiency was quite low on most of these shots that were being hit at the start. And this is gonna send the ball pretty high up in the air. It's not gonna carry that far and it's certainly not gonna roll that far either. So having such discrepancy between the angle of attack and the loft, and then between the club path and the club face, having that much of a discrepancy again is gonna give us a very low efficiency rating. We want something in the high 1.4 somethings, maybe 1.50 if we can get it to get the maximum amount of ball speed. But the average at the beginning of the session was somewhere around about 1.34, 1.35. So it was particularly low. We needed to get that efficiency up to increase ball speed and subsequently increase distance. So now let's take a look at a shot that was quite typical of the end of the session. And straight away, we can see that there's less discrepancy between the angle of attack and the actual dynamic loft on the golf club. The dynamic loft now is 13.4 degrees, so half of what it was at the start of the session. And the attack angle, pretty similar, one degree up, so we didn't really change that at all. Now those numbers combining with a slightly higher strike on the face gave us a spin of 1,852 RPM. So a fraction really of what it was at the beginning and again this is going to have a profound effect on what the golf ball does when it's in the air. We changed the club path two degrees to the right instead of being sort of six seven degrees to the left and the face of that path was sort of two or three degrees closed so again less discrepancy than it was before subsequently we we're getting a much higher efficiency this shot in particular was 1.48 on that efficiency rating so the ball speed was far higher. And as we look from this angle, you can see with the club face and club path relationship, we can see that the axis was different on the ball. This gentleman was going from being quite a heavy fader come puller and left the session being somebody who was hitting quite penetrating in low draws. Now let's put these two shots side by side so we can actually see the difference in the delivery of the clubs and compare. So before at the start of the session, club speed on the first shot, 98.1 miles an hour. This was maybe a fraction lower than what the gentleman was actually doing at the beginning of the session. He was kind of averaging in around 100 miles an hour or there or thereabouts. End of the session, club speed was pretty much the same as what he was at the beginning, just over 100 miles an hour. But look at the difference in the ball speed, 132 to 148, 149 here at the back end of the session. So almost pushing a 150 ball speed barrier, which is massive. Club path, 7.8 left at the start, two degrees to the right at the end of the session. So a massive difference there, almost 10 degrees. And the club phase to that path at the beginning was 10 degrees open, and at the end was four degrees closed. Dynamic loft again was halved, 26.9 to 13.4. Attack angle pretty much stayed the same. Spin loft, massive difference, less than half towards the end of the session. This is gonna put a lot less spin on the golf ball at the start, 4,311 was really quite high, almost double what it should be for this guy. So as you can see there, some pretty hefty changes to the way that the club was delivered, and then subsequently massive difference to the way that the ball performed. 
But here's the kicker, it was really simple. That doesn't mean that it was easy to do for the client, but the input from me to them was as simple as it's gonna get. And there was only three small things that I suggested to the client in order to make those massive changes to the club delivery. Change number one was the swing path. That was really quite simple. We just put a cane down on the ground and aimed it slightly to the right of the target and got them to feel as though they were swinging down that line. That's pretty old school. Change number two was club face angle to marry up with that path to get the face slightly close to path. And it brought the dynamic loft down as well, which had a major influence on how far the ball went, spin rate and direction. And in order to do that, all I got the client to do was feel as though they were rotating their arms through the shot. And that was it. I didn't get them to feel as though they're twisting hands. I'm not particularly keen on that idea. This was all about just rotating their arms through the hitting area. And I was going to rotate the handle, subsequently rotating the head, de-lofting it, closing the club face and giving us that lovely ball flight. And the third change that we made wasn't actually related to the data that we've seen, but it was just trying to tidy up strike. I just got the client to feel as though they were hitting a golf ball, which was just slightly inside the one that they were actually hitting. And it was moving the strike away from the heel and moving it a little bit more towards the center of the club face. Again, just adding a few extra miles an hour on the ball and giving us some of those extra yards. Now, it's not always the case that things are that simple here in the coaching room. Sometimes it does get a little bit more technical, but it's a perfect example of what I think good coaching is. It's very often the case that less is more and often trying to appear as though you know what you're talking about and making a session more complicated often has a detrimental effect to the person that's swinging the club. So I try to make every single session as simple as it possibly can be for each and every person that comes in, regardless of their problem. If you're somebody who's struggling and you're reasonably local to me, you can book a lesson with me. There's a link in the description of this video if you want to get yourself booked in and improve your game. So thanks for watching. If you've got any questions about this video or the information within it, please leave a question in the comments box below. So thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, press that red button down there. You know where it is. And click on the little bell icon as well. That'll tell you when my next upload is. So until next time, happy golfing. See you soon.